and we, every week we start with our MLB Minute, <clears throat> and this week is no exception. If you're new, the MLB Minute works thusly. Each week we choose a topic that's going on around a Major League Baseball, and each of us takes one minute, hence MLB Minute. One minute to share our thoughts, feelings, wishes, desires, etc., on said topic. And then the timer will go off from my phone. The timer will go off indicating (laughs) that your one minute has (laughs) expired. Yeah, Please take note of that people on YouTube. Yes. On our YouTube channel. Yes. That's why the phone is on. That's why the alarm goes off. That's right. It's, it's all part of the show folks. It's all part of the show anyway. All right. So this week we thought um, we'd join everybody and their dog talking about the new uh, MLB rules. Um, I even had one of my students come up to me today and says, you know what? I like the pitch clock. Of course you do, you young little... (laughs) Anyway, you have the attention span of a gnat. Of course you do. But here we are (laughs) talking Major League Baseball's rule changes one minute a piece. Karen, we're going to start with you. And your one minute begins now. So, yes, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about that pitch clock. And they announced all these different rules. And to be honest, I didn't really know what kind of impact they would have, whether I myself would like them or not. Well, you know what? So far, I'm really liking this one a lot more than I thought that I would. I, I myself, I've been a baseball fan for decades, and I'm kind of used to the pace of it. But you know what? If there are a lot of younger people, like you say, who maybe their attention span is a little bit different, and it hasn't really been their cup of tea because of that, if that helps with that, then I'm all for it because I want this game that I love and I'm sure we all really love to continue. I want to be able to watch baseball as long as I'm around. Also, if it helps pitchers like you say, Kikuchi, if this is what he needed to unlock because he has talent, if this is what he needed to help him become the pitcher that he can be, A++. Keep it going. Karen, your timing was about perfect. Hit the post, absolutely. The right. only thing missing was on Saturday. Yeah, the only thing missing was time and weather, and it was it was a perfect radio <laughs> setup. That was awesome. <laughs> All right, Steve, your one minute begins now. Well, I actually uh, brought along a little prop for my MLB minute. Because a lot of you are whining about all these rules changes. It's really not that big of a deal. There are lots of rule changes every year. Every year, everybody gets all worked up about it. And it really, it turns out fine. Okay, some of them are stupid, like the base runner on second base in extra ratings. That's going to be the stupidest thing to ever happen to baseball, other than appointing Rob Manford commissioner. But everybody just has to relax. Okay, it'll work itself up the pitch clock. The larger bases, they're all going to work out just fine. And even the players, 80% of the players have already used the pitch clock and already had larger bases. So it's only the veteran dinosaur players that I remember growing up playing that they are going to have an issue with this. And for people like Manny Machado that just signed an extension, that, that should ease some of his pain for ha- having to always be called out. I think he's been called out twice already. <laughs> Oh, Manny Machado. He could be called out 167 times in a game, and I would still say it's not enough. That one's for you, Christian. For you, Christian Rao, my buddy over at all the OBP, the OK Baseball Podcast. I know you're watching. Manny Machado's the worst, just so you know. All right, my one minute begins. (laughs) Excuse me. Now. I'm actually going to talk about the shift and, and the uh, uh, the attempt at controlling the shift. It's not banning it completely. It's just making sure there are set rules. Um, and I actually find it interesting. I like the fact, first of all, that, uh, that the infielders are where they are and that they can't cross that imaginary halfway point. Guys like Kevin Biggio should be breathing a sigh of relief. Like every time he steps up to the place, it's like nine guys right there between first and second. Poor bastard. But... <clears throat> what I do find more interesting is that they've left the outfield alone. So some brave team is going to try 
adjusting one of their outfielders in to kind of make up for that shift. So I want to see, is it potentially going to lead to uh, positioning where they have an entire like left field is wide open kind of thing. Um, that's what I'll be waiting to see how how creative our team's going to get with this shift. Uh, it'll be rather fascinating. I can't see a team in the playoff hunt trying anything too crazy, but if it start working for other teams, maybe they will. <laughs> yeah, and I think the big the, the overall point with regard to these rule changes is just as you said, Steve. Like I think we've all made a mountain out of a molehill here, um, and I think the the not knowing what it would look like at the end of the day, I think that was probably the big where all this came from, and the fact that that there are so many different rules and and all of that stuff. But what's really interesting is trying to explain baseball to a, a newbie anyway. Um, cause it's very situational and it's very, you like, you can't even get through one game and explain all of the rules because something will come up that you're like, Oh, except what, you know, and then there's a whole new set of rules for that. Um, and I think that's kind of, you know, adding to the complication, but I think it'll be fun. I think it'll create more, more action on the base paths as they say. And if it didn't, then you know what, we'll just blame Rob Manford and, and that'll be that. <laughs> 